Think of French cars and you'll think of Citroen. OK, OK, you might also think of Peugeot and Renault. But it's really all the unique automotive history that André Citroën and his colleagues brought to the party in the early days that really stretched the frontiers of car design. Just take a look at these uniquely French cars from their early days. It's almost as if they went out of their way to make the lines of their machines far different than anything from the rest of Europe and certainly from America. With a design heritage like this, you'd think that modern day Citroën concepts would be bold, innovative and original. And you'd be right. The curious Osmo's car share design questioned personal ownership of vehicles in a city, revealing some attractive but maybe impractical designs. And the Citella was one of many electrically powered urban vehicles developed by Citroën. Not only was the Citella electrically powered, it was quite nippy considering this was a project from 1992. Why, well, that was the last century! But have you seen the Citella's party trick? The vehicle also featured a modular body, enabling it to be transformed at will from a coupe to a mini estate to a saloon. Not quite at a touch of a button, but there's no explanation of where the old body top can be stored or disposed of. Bizarre or what? Many of these styling cues were carried over into the Eco 2000 project, which looked at the long-term future of cars in the 21st century. As well as specific concept shapes, there was much work on making petrol and diesel engines super frugal and investigation into new fuel technologies. Plus, the latest Citroen concept, the C-Crosser, looks at how drive-by-wire technologies could affect car design. After all, without all those mechanical connections, it would open up many more possibilities, including passing the steering wheel over if you get tired driving left-hand drive and right-hand drive models would be things of the past. Citroen's design chief is the talented Jean-Pierre Plouet and we caught up with him at the Geneva International Show where he first told us how he got into car design. I think when I was, when I was a child uh, I was very, uh, had all these small, uh, uh, you know, this matchbox, majorette car and at this time uh, I, 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 was, uh, I was six, seven I remember all this uh, Italian concept car like Boomerang, uh, uh, Huraco, uh, Modulo, all these cars. And I think uh, it was the beginning of my uh, passion for, for car. You'd think top car designers would be influenced by other cars, wouldn't you? But Jean-Pierre gets inspiration from everyday household objects. When we are designing a car for the future, we are more inspired by, uh, by more than just car. By, uh, by furniture, by, by, by architecture, by, by the nature sometimes. Just the nature could uh, help us to, uh, to imagine uh, a fabric for a car, uh, a shape for a seat, uh, whatever. So let's run through some of Citroen's most notable recent concepts. First, the Sea Crosser. We, we wanted to create, a, create, in a way, a kind of tool which adapted to different configurations, different needs in people's sort of very complex lives, uh, a little bit like um, a little bit like a, a Leatherman knife, something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's got many functions, it's, it's a compact object, within that compact object you've got many different possibilities and without too much complication you can transform it as you, as you wish. According to Mark, soon many more cars will become drive-by-wire, thus freeing up design possibilities. It's a technology which I think if it does come about and does uh, come into production, it'll be probably the biggest change that we've seen in cars for a very, very long time. But it was the Osmos concept that created a huge commotion when the French company unveiled the concept to an unsuspecting world. Apart from its form, its materials, the, the, the thinking behind Osmos was that vehicles in built-up urban areas cause problems. It's a, it's, a diff, it's a difficult relationship for all sorts of reasons. And I don't think the answer to that difficult relationship is necessarily just making it smaller, cleaner, more compact. I don't think that solves the problem goes a little way to solving the problem but it's it's not everything it's still it's always going to be a bit of a sort of 
relationship with a bit of um, friction between the, between the two elements. And so Osmos was all about thinking of prospective solutions in order to change, the, to change that relationship. And that is in terms of sharing part of the car. Uh, it's in terms of using the car as a vehicle for communication to be shared with other people. Uh, and it's, 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 a, it, it, it's a way of making the object welcomed into the city centre as a useful object for everyone rather than just a useful object for the owner. But for Citroen, their current hot hit has to be the little city runaround, the C3, which we're now beginning to see around the roads of the UK. The C3 started out as this concept, the Lumiere, which was first shown at the Paris Motor Show four years ago. It's fascinating to compare concepts with the production car version to see where various styling tucks and nips have been made to the metalwork and which changes have had to be made to get the car through various essential legislative hoops. Obviously, the wide suicide doors have gone, but these are often put on concepts so the space inside can easily be looked at from outside. The compact nose and front overhang of the concept are both grown in size for the C3 production car. And we asked Donato Coco, the design boss of Citroen's small car division, why this was. Yes, of course, we would not prefer, for example, to have a front of rang much more compact, like the concept car had. But, you know, for safety reasons, we had, of course, to adapt. And uh, therefore, the front end grew a little bit. But at the end, uh, it has become uh, uh, more a plus than a negative uh, part of the car, because uh, it expressed a lot of uh, uh, maturity, a lot of uh, uh, strongness and uh, you feel really safe in that car uh, probably more than in the C3 Lumiere which had a very short and compact nose. So why had other changes been done to the eventual production model? In the C3 Lumiere you have a concept car and uh, this is really a rough, very interesting experience we've done. We have a very creative uh, team and it was uh, for us the opportunity to really explore a new way, a new architecture and uh, there was no, no constraints at all, fortunately. The cute bubble look of the C3 looks like a design trend set to continue for Citroen cars. Uh, I mean it was already the case, uh, as I used to say already, on uh, the 2CV, uh, has been the case on the Picasso, it is the case on the C3. Uh, wait a little bit more and you'll have probably an answer, but uh, it's uh, definitely a, a strong mark of the next product, I mean the, 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 the last few and next few products coming.